everybody welcome back to the channel uh, now this week we are going to do something completely new and by that I don't mean turning an old grotty piece of wood now as you are uh, people who follow my channel and see some of the videos I've produced already uh, are aware when I'm out walking with the dogs I like to pick things up and see if it'll turn into a bowl or not and the other day I was out walking and I came across this. Yes, you are right, it is not a piece of wood. It's an old uh, roof tile. Uh, now, I've always, I like doing inlays and things like that with wood. Uh, I've done a bit of research and I cannot find anybody anywhere who's inserted slate into their wood. So, rightly or wrongly, for better or for worse, we are going to create uh, a kind of a vase form from this piece of wood, which I believe is pine, not quite completely sure. Uh, create a vase form, cut it across, and then glue up the slate inside it, and then shape it so it's all one piece. So anyway, that's the video. It may go horribly wrong, but you'll find out one way or another. Okay, thank you very much. Let's get going. Okay, this is going to be a bit of a rocky ride at the start. I've got a freshly ground up roughing gouge. I should put my Face shield on. Let's give this a final couple of twists just to make sure it's as secure and as safe as we can get it. Move you out of the way. Face mask. Okay. Let's start. basically doing investigations up and down this uh, this piece of wood to see where I'm best making this vase from. 
given that it's pine. From there down, it doesn't seem particularly brilliant. I don't think this crack goes very deep, but the end grain is absolutely awful. So, we're going to be limited to the kind of styles we can do with this. But, we're going to continue. decided what we're going to do. We're going to make a, a bud vase, bottom, top somewhere around there. And it's going to be a, an angular shape. not to proportion. Straight side there, straight side there, broader on the base with a slate inlay around there. That gives enough room to put our tube in. Okay, let's start getting this bottom ready. past that crack in these areas. Still plenty of meat on this, so still go down a lot further. It's a very interesting pattern. I've not done a lot with pine. You can see why. The layers between, so the rings in the, uh, the wood are very frayed. I'm not sure exactly how it's going to turn to sanding, but I may have an idea to help make that look a little nicer. Not that it's horrible, it's just a bit fluffy. Getting closer to having to make positive decisions. So I've got my wood tube out just to check where we are. Now, ideally, I want to try and start the taper to the neck about a third of the way down the bars. So from here, angle it in. Which would mean an angle of about that, I think. 
to the main. So it looks like it has a lower center of gravity. So I think I'll get that line in next. Bring the center of gravity around here. So this line that you see here, is gonna be here. And hopefully, there's our crack. The crack goes from there to there. Hopefully that will take up virtually most, of, virtually all of that. With a bit of luck. There you go, that's the next step. we've got an enormous amount of tear out in the wood which is kind of unavoidable in pine but I'm going to sharpen up the ball gouge as much as I can and just do some very very fine cuts and see if I can improve that before we have to start sanding. Right, before I start putting this inlay in, I think I'm going to spend just a couple of minutes just to give this a quick surface sand and see how it looks. I'm going to use something quite aggressive. I'm going to use a hand sander and just hold it over this area and just see what happens. certainly did the trick. So let's measure where we're going to put this inlay. Over the neck. There. Bottom of the stem there. So halfway between these points I reckon. There. I have no idea how I'm going to cut the slate, but it can't be too hard. Right, I'm going to part this off right across that line. Time now to cut this piece of slate. I've put one of those disc attachments on my Dremel. I'm just going to go across over there just to release this bit here that I can use uh, to measure the circle from my uh, base. Never tried it with uh, slate before, so we'll give it a go. I'll turn the extraction on, I'll be putting the safety goggles on and my mask on. 
Otherwise you won't be here for me for a couple of seconds. again. I've managed to get the the slate cut into a, a rough circle which does fit pretty well what we already have. Now a few problems we run into uh, with slate being uh, laminar, laminarly formed it's in layers it's, it's like a strata rock. There's a better word for it but I can't think of it off the top of my head right now. I did lose some edges which is probably the reason why people don't do this or have tried and failed. But we're going to continue, we're going to take this through to the end and see what it looks like. So next stage now is to glue that onto there and then that onto there. Okay, and then clamp it up and leave it and then move on from there. Important things to do is that we need to make sure that we give this enough coating of resin that it fills these voids right out the edges. And also, when we put these together and clamp it, that'll line up the grain of the wood, because that's gonna be one thing very easy to overlook. So I've chosen a, like a, a slate gray color to put into the epoxy. So we'll mix up a healthy batch get this put together. This side has the most voids in, so I'll be gluing this side down, as it were. This is going to get very messy, isn't it? directly on to this end of the wood. Right, I want more than enough, so I'm just going quickly. Another quick batch. Cut the circle in the end. I was using that little uh, Dremel, Dremel tool, but I thought I've got a bigger version of this, so I took out my angle grinder, took off the bits to get to not a perfect circle, just a bit further down, and then I took it to my bench grinder and turned it into a circle. 
that's a very, very, very messy job, job. So if you do anything like that, please make sure that you've got adequate ventilation, good breathing mask, and then think twice. Right, that's the side for down. So that is on. Need to clear this out of the way. Bring this up. Line up my start to clamp. <laughs> Which isn't easy. Right, let's take this glove off. There. to catch the drips and it is dripping. Right, I'll take this glove off and start panicking. I'm going to put tape around this in a second. Collective fingers crossed for success. Let's give that a rest. So there it goes. All right, I'll see you after. Okay, so the next morning. Let's see if it's underneath here. with a carbide cutter just clean away some of this resin and see how it looks right back in a second to be quite difficult to turn the uh, carbide's doing something to it you can tell because it's covering my fingers in the dust from the uh, I think when I've glued it back and pushed it together it's just kind of shifted a little bit that way which is why we've got still got this uh, Last a bit here. Right, this is going to take a lot of uh, very slow work to try and get these back to some resemblance of uh, 
straight again. But we're committed now, so we shall keep going. Believe it or not, grinding stone is as difficult as you would think grinding stone would be. <laughs> it is such a mess of this still again. Right, okay, so let's get this blown out. Let's so get our resin out again. bit was this round here so I'll leave that to the bottom right now we wait again now right, I've quickly popped out to see how we've got on with this last resin fill expedition that I'll get set up and give that a little go see how it's gone Just that one little small gap. Is that the same one? Yep, yeah, that's that one little gap. We'll put a bit of glue in there, see if it's CA glue. And just hit it with a bit of activator. And then that should take care of that.
Not sure if you can see it on the camera. Let's see if I'm zooming in. But there's a hairline crack. Appearing all the way around. Which I don't like the look of. Does that mean that this, for all intents and purposes, is actually in two pieces right now? Do I walk away? No, let's carry on. Right, I'm gonna carry on sanding. I don't honestly think this can be a bud vase anymore. Because as soon as I go in there with a the drill, that's just gonna shatter. But I may be able to get an obelisk out of it. A paperweight, whatever you wanna call it. So if I just, Take this up to a taper it up to a point, and then it is what it is. All right, we'll do that. I'll. All right, I'll do this first. Taking it down further gives you lots of times to think. That is this savable? What can I do with it? Etc. etc. I'm not taking this support away at any point in the near future. But I have thought about taking this piece of art. Piece of art. Plan is. Bring this taper down a little bit further. Just again, like before, lower the center of gravity of the perceived image. Then we're going to color it from black into red. And then I'm going to gold tip the top. Makes sense to me anyway. Right. I'll just take this out a bit further and then we'll start sanding. Then we'll colour and then polish on and then cut it off and hand shape the top.
Well, that's the dangerous bit over. We're going to hand sanding now. And uh, I'll let me wash that. I'll bring you back when that's done. If this is still in one piece. Right, we're up to 320. We've got some bleed into the uh, the grains around the edge of this, which I don't particularly like, but there's... Give me the alternative, there's not an awful lot I can do about it. I could chamfer in these edges around the edge here, but that could lead to complete disaster. So anyway, right, we're gonna colour this. Just clean it off first. process here for colouring is to get my colours, get lots of sponges and then to channel my inner child and just go crazy. I'm not quite sure what's going to make this look better so I'm just going to keep on going until I either give up or I like what I've got. As this is rapidly turning into an experimental piece, destined for the uh, the shelf of shame, uh, let's carry on experimenting. Uh, not done this many times before. In fact, I've done this once before. Where we're going to the finish we're going to use is CA glue. Now the technique for this is to obviously wear rubber gloves. We're going to drip it onto the piece as we hold a cloth underneath it, and then run it along as the lathe is spinning. Not too fast. I'm going to wear a face mask for this. And I'm going to turn on the extractor because the fumes off the glue can get a bit nasty. <laughs> I think I'm done practicing. So we'll take this off. If it falls apart, it falls apart. Let's see what happens. At the start we asked the question, can I get a piece of slate into a piece of wood? And yes, there it is, that is slate and that is wood. Uh, but this isn't to be done again. 
I think uh, Slate is too uh, structurally unsafe for this kind of project. So I will not be doing it again, although I have enjoyed the process. I've enjoyed working out things and I've enjoyed uh, trying to fix problems as they occur. I also enjoyed messing around with colours. I haven't done that since I was a little kid. So apart from that, uh, if you've enjoyed the video, if you've learned anything, uh, please feel free to like and subscribe. Uh, if uh, you leave a comment as well, then you're going to be entered into uh, a giveaway for a bowl when we get to a thousand subscribers. It won't be this. Don't worry, you will not be getting this. This is going on uh, the shelf of shame. So that's it. Thank you very much indeed for viewing, uh, and I'll see you next time.